Hello to bros and welcome back to my IT workshop. This is your boy Alvin Drill. In this video I'm going to show you how to install more SATA connectors on a desktop computer. So for that end I'm going to use this Dell Optiplex 3040 but you can use any other model. You can have an HP, Lenovo, maybe you build it yourself. Doesn't make a difference. The process is very similar. Okay, so now I'm going to show you uh, this computer, uh, a little about this desktop computer. So as you can see, this is a Dell Optiplex uh, 3040. You can see that over there. And this one has a CD DVD reader. So that's something interesting about this computer. So now we are going to proceed. I'm going to sh I'm showing you that I'm not wearing any jewelry or watches and I'm going to discharge my myself of any static electricity that I might have in my body by touching the case for a few seconds. So now I'm going to open the case, very simple in these models. And this is how it looks. So I replaced the classic 3.5 mechanical hard drive by two SSDs. I have done a video in the past on how to do that. So if you're interested in that, you can click on the top right of this screen for that video. So as, as I mentioned, I have two SSDs over here. One has Windows 10, can be Windows 8, Windows 7, and the other is empty. As you can see, the bottom is the one that has Windows and only one is connected. The other one, well, I don't have a cable for that. I don't, I don't have a SATA or power for that. So now I'm going to proceed to uh, disconnect, well, not disconnect, to remove everything, as you can see there. So I want to show you a few things. So these kind of Dell models, also HP sometimes, they have only two SATA ports on the motherboard. So the blue one is for the hard drive and the, uh, the orange one is for, for the CD DVD reader. So what you can do possibly is that you can get rid of the CD DVD reader because it's 2021 and nobody really uses those anymore but there is also another problem so you can see there the cd dvd reader uh, even if you do that you all you only have on these models only one power for one sata power cable for the ssds or for the hard drives okay so you don't have any other left as you can see here that's the only one so the first thing you would have to do is to get these these cables over here so they are SATA power cable splitter if you're interested I'm going to leave the link in the description below and this one goes from one to two so you connect it like this to the only power SATA power and now you have two for your uh, SSD for your for your two SSDs okay but what if you want to use all of all you don't want to lose your uh, CD DVD reader because for some reason you use it <laughs> and you don't want to lose it so this is not enough the splitter is not going to be enough to provide to provide power and SATA and data connection for all your uh, devices so for that we need this uh, PCIe SATA 3.0 card again the link is going to be in the video description below I like this model a lot because it comes with four uh, SATA cables it comes with a screwdriver, which is very useless. <laughs> You're going to see it in a few more seconds. So I'm going to show you now the card, how it looks. So as you can see, this is a PCI Express over here, and it has four SATA, SATA connectors. Maybe you don't need four. I'm going to leave the link in the description below for two, for the model that only has two, okay? So, but, but this is the one I have. So you have to make sure that your desktop computer, your motherboard has a PCIe Express connector. So uh, that way it's going to fit, otherwise it's not going to work. So this one is normally black, but it comes in many other colors. So this is the, the port for the, for the video card. And if you're interested in, in turning a desktop, an office computer into a gaming uh, machine, you can click on the top right of this screen. So now uh, I forgot here that uh, the, uh, I had the camera zoom in. So I'm connecting everything. And I, I, I'm showing you that everything is connected back. And now we're going to proceed to install it. So to release, we have to remove one cover. And it's very easy to do it, but here I was struggling for a few seconds, but it's very simple to remove it. So once you do it, it's going to look like this. You put it aside, and now we're going to install the card. Allow me to do a zoom in. And the way it goes, but first, this, uh, this bracket that it has is kind of big for this model. This bracket is more for a classical desktop uh, tower computer, but that's why this model comes with this uh, pro, uh, lower profile. So the only thing you have to do is remove, remove the two screws, but <laughs> the screwdriver that comes with the box is useless. So I have to use another and it's still useless. So I have to use a third one, which is a little bigger than the other two. And this time it worked with no problems because the screws were very tight. 
So once you remove the high profile bracket, you replace it by the other one. Okay, so this is very simple to do, as you can see in the video, it's not complicated at all. And now you simply put install the other. So you screw it back and now we have it ready for this desktop computer. So now make sure that it's going to fit. So there is only one way it can fit anyway, but just make sure so you, uh, you don't break anything. So now it's very simple to install. You have to just push it down very gently. But again, I'm always struggling with computers. So after a few seconds, you are going to have it. So here I was testing it for a few seconds and after you hit you you hear that noise that means is installed so i'm making sure it's not going to be loose or it's not going to fall or anything so i secure it now and, and now i'm going to show you how it looks in the back so you can see there the cover okay next we are going to use our sata cables as mentioned it comes for so you can choose any that any one that you like or maybe you already have one and you have to connect it to any of the four ports. You can choose any one that you like. So I'm going to show you again that we have four ports and you can choose any one that you like. So these cables are a little, well, they are, yeah, they are a little long, so you might have another, but they work just fine. So you choose one and now we are going to, you, you make sure that it's connected correctly. And now we are going to connect everything back. Well, I connected the other end of the red cable, the SATA, to the uh, SSD that didn't have anything. So now I'm connecting the power. As you can see here, I do a little of cable management, so it looks a little a little better. So now I'm going to connect everything, the power, like you can see me doing there, and uh, you can see the fan spinning. So now I'm going to connect the monitor to the desktop computer, and now I'm going to connect the mouse and the keyboard, and I'm going to turn on the computer. So allow me a few seconds to adjust my camera so we, so we can proceed. So once that's adjusted, you can see the Dell log over there. The video sped up in some parts, and this is the Windows. So I'm going to log in. Now I'm going to go to this PC, and you can see that obviously the C drive that has Windows 10 is there. And the CD DVD reader is also being recognized. But where is my other SSD, the second one? So I don't see it anywhere. So for that, the, you know, the SSD is the one that we have connected to the, to the card. So now you have to type computer management and click on it. And then you go to disk management and right away it's going to recognize the SSD. It's telling me that disk one, as, as it is named by the system, you must initialize before we can have access to it. So by default is selected GPT, MBR is for uh, operating system. So we are not going to use that. We're going to leave it by default. So we go to okay. And now, as you can see, it's going to change. Well, now it has disappeared. Now I can see it unallocated and it's black. I right click on it. I go to new, create new volume. I'm going to leave everything as default because I don't want to do any partitions or anything. And you can choose the partition letter. I'm going to leave it as D. And now all this is by default. Uh, it's going to be format even though it doesn't have anything. So you just click next and you can change the volume name, but I'm just going to leave it like that. And after a few seconds, it's going to be blue. And on the bottom right, it says new volume. So we're going to open this PC again, and now you, we can see the new volume D. As you can see, it's empty as expected, but it's being recognized. Besides now, with that card, we have uh, where Windows is installed, uh, the CD DVD reader, and an extra SSD. So here I'm showing you that everything is working. This is the, the PNY is the one that we have added just now the one 250 gigabyte and, and you can do a little a little better cable management maybe and i just wanted to show you that the card is working obviously and it has a light i don't know if you can see it it's kind of bluish but that means it's connected and it's working properly okay so the only thing left we have to do is put everything i mean put the cover back and that's it that's and that's all i wanted to show you in this video guys it's how to install and PCIe Express card so you can have more SATA ports on a desktop computer. So maybe now you want to watch one of these videos. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any other comment or questions, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, as you know, I'll see you in the next video.